Hello, Pastor Elizabeth here, and I am joining you from the Apple Blossom Dream Studio slash guest room. And I would like to personally welcome you to the Granny Rose 2 Sal, Sal standing for Stash Along. The whole premise of this project is to use as much of your stash as you can without purchasing any yarn. So I have been working on it a little bit while I've been filming the different weeks. And this is what my stash looks like now. But in the next clip, I will show you what it looked like before. And then I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the plan that I have. So let me make it perfectly clear. You don't need a plan for this. You can just use any color in any step and I think it'll be absolutely beautiful. When I started crocheting these, I had a lot of gray. So I thought gray would be my main color and the background, the granny rows of all my squares. So I got to this point and then I ran out of gray. Seemed like I had a lot, but this is all I have left. So I did have to order more gray, but this yarn is not very expensive, so I was thankful for that. And while I was waiting for that, I just started crocheting more of the pieces. And I'm kind of doing them in the rainbow order in rows, I guess, down this way, the most that I can. And then it was taking so long to get the yarn that I found some other gray colors in my stash. And I thought, well, maybe... I could use these for the main color too and kind of give it an ombre effect. So the flowers themselves are in the bright color wheel order and then all of the granny row and the half double crochet row will be in gray. So um, you certainly don't need to have a plan. This can just be completely random and it'll still be really beautiful. So I am looking forward to the next six weeks. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for joining me. And um, I look forward to your comments in the comment section. Remember, you can hashtag Granny Rose 2 Sal on Instagram. And also post photos under that. I would love to see your projects. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Bye for now. Alrighty, this is my stash. I emptied every drawer, every hiding place, and there was so much that I had to dump it on the guest room bed. And so I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to organize these in preparation for next Saturday's post on how to start crocheting these motifs, the Granny Rose 2. So I've kind of grouped these in yarn types. I think you could mix some yarn types, but make sure that the washing instructions would be similar. If you're making a project that will most likely be washed, then you don't want wool on one motif and cotton on one and acrylic on another because they're gonna shrink differently. But if you're pretty sure something's not going to shrink and the yarn is a, a similar weight, then I think it would just work fine. So what I've decided to do is divide these out by type of yarn and then within each type the weight. So this is an acrylic cotton blend. This is my 100% acrylic and these are just some various different yarns. This is a merino wool blend and then these are some sparkly yarns that I use for snowflakes. So I have some projects in mind for some of these, but not really anything in particular. Most of it is leftover yarn from other projects. So I have decided to go with this um, acrylic. They'll wash together fine. I could probably combine it with these others because I don't think there's, except for maybe not the cotton. 100% cotton probably wouldn't be the best idea, but 100% cotton on its own would be beautiful. So what I'm going to do next is going to organize this yarn into balls. I like to use a yarn bowl 
to hold my yarn and um I mean there's this is kind of messy like what is this this is two pieces of chunks of yarn connected together I need to organize that so I will be back once this is all organized and talk just a little bit more about how to approach this and what you can do to prepare hello I am back with a somewhat organized stash. So I have um, grabbed all my yarn that was of similar weight and I wound them into balls if they were loose and difficult to work with. And then I lined up the ones that I had quite a bit of, the top here, because I was trying to choose a main color. And as you can see, there are a lot of options for main colors. The main color is the color that's going to go around your rows. So I think that green would be really awesome. It was, wasn't until recently that I realized green was a neutral. Any of these colors would be really great for your main color. Just want to choose something if you're going to have a consistent color all the way around your rows you want to choose something that you have a lot of so that you don't have to order yarn or you don't have to order much the goal here is to try and not purchase any yarn because this is a stash buster unfortunately the color i chose was this gray in here and that's all i have left so i did have to order some of those but i can keep myself busy working on the middle part and crocheting along with you. So I've placed these in the color wheel order. And I'm gonna kinda stick with that, with these brighter colors. I had some neutrals down here, but I don't think I'm gonna do a whole lot with neutral. Um, grays, blacks, beige. And I even had these little tiny bits of yarn here that aren't any of these colors that I could combine them with because I just didn't have the heart to throw them away. Sometimes I'll run out of a color in a project and I just need that tiny little bit more. So I did organize those. I am good with these being in balls versus in a cake from a winder, which are really cool. However, I just stick the balls in a yarn ball. Isn't that cute? and clip them in the meantime with one of these little hair clips. They come in these tiny sizes and a little bit bigger. And I just ordered those online. So kind of doing a little bit, I have a little bit of a plan where I will be putting these kind of in a color wheel order. They'll all have gray in the back. But I think what would be really fun is if you just threw all of these in a basket. Oops, sorry about my finger. If you threw them all in a basket and then just closed your eyes, grabbed one, and made that your first color. And then when you were done with that, throw that into another basket. Then close your eyes and grab another one. And it would just be completely random, but I think it would be so fun. You'd be throwing your color into another basket so that you wouldn't repeat the same color twice. And then start that whole process over again. And I think that would make for a, a really cool blanket or, or really anything. So what's going to happen here is the first or the next week I'm going to teach you how to make the middle. And then you can make a whole bunch of those in a week. And I would probably use your little bits and pieces for those because you might only have enough for a middle. And sometimes if, say, you used this color here for the next step, you might run out and that would be frustrating. So I'd use all the little bits and pieces for your very middle, like I should say inner petal. That's kind of cup shape there. Then the following week we will add these petals. 
four petals to the outside of it. And then the following week, the outer petals. And then the week after that, we will turn them into kind of this rounded, cornered granny square. And then after that, I will show you a couple of other options on, you know, squaring them out with some different looks. And then we'll talk about what projects we're going to use these for. I would love it if you would all post your progress on Instagram and hashtag it Granny Rose 2 Stash Buster Cal. Oh gosh, that's long, isn't it? How about 2023 Cal? Oh goodness. I'm going to have to think of something better. I'll put it down in the, in the notes when I think of what would be best. This gets like too many words. So I hope you will join me. Now this cowl is going to be completely free. I will teach you how to do everything here. However, if you would like to purchase the pattern from Ravelry, Etsy, or Lovecrafts under Apple Blossom Dreams on Ravelry, it's Austri Elizabeth Designs, Elizabeth with an S. And um, then you'll have the, the whole pattern every week and you can reference that as we crochet along and you know as a small business owner that is so helpful but it's not necessary I always understand that that free can be a good thing depending on your phase in life and I'm happy to have you whether you purchase the pattern or just follow along for free so hope you're having a great day and I will see you next Saturday bye bye